As I was sitting here yesterday uh, in our chapel, uh, having a look at our new stained glass windows and delighting in them, uh, I noticed the Advent candles and our Advent wreath, and they're getting to the stage now where they're quite messy. All right, the, the candles have melted, they've kind of fallen into each other, there's wax dripping down all over the place, maybe, I'm not sure if you can see that from the live stream camera at home, but it's just getting really, uh, they're getting, they need a bit of trim and that, and we'd, our, our usual uh, sacristans are gone home for Christmas, so uh, it's kind of hard to keep up with all the little jobs around here. But it's that stage in preparation for Christmas where things can get a bit messy, right? where uh, especially now that they've declared another lockdown after Christmas, now there's a bit of a panic to get visits in, to get the shopping done, uh, to get last minute uh, gifts, uh, people returning home, all of the, 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 the busyness can kind of reach a uh, fever pitch or at least a, a, a more uh, demanding uh, degree. So it can just be a, a, difficult, a difficult time, I think, in preparation for Christmas. I was talking to someone yesterday who has all sorts of Christmas traditions uh, in her family and uh, while they're, they're great and Christmas traditions are wonderful, they just put her under so much pressure. You know, there's a certain dessert expected by people, there's a certain meal expected by uh, others, <coughs> there are certain gifts expected and there's so, many, so, much, so much expectation, you know, and you, know, you don't want to let anyone down. So in the midst of all of this busyness and preparation, we, we can, can never or should never lose sight of what this is all about. And it's something that, that, that I say regularly enough, but we should always have, as adults, and I presume it's most of you that are adults, most of you are adults who are watching this live stream this morning, uh, we should have an, a, an adult understanding of our faith. Uh, otherwise, Christmas just becomes a nice little feast for the kiddies, uh, Santi comes and all that kind of thing, but it's got no real meaning for us as adults, apart from maybe the family coming back together and it's a time of unity. But there is a much deeper message. There is a much deeper message. In our first reading from the prophet Malachi, it ends with this uh, beautiful, beautiful phrase, which is so key to our faith, so key to our understanding even of the Trinity, so, so key to our understanding <coughs> of the sacraments and of prayer. Know that I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet before my day comes, that great and terrible day. So that's the day of the Lord. He shall turn the hearts of fathers towards their children and the hearts of the children towards their fathers. This is, it may sound a bit unusual, but this is just so key to us understanding our faith. Why has the Lord come? Or why will the Lord come into the crib? Why did the Lord become man? The purpose of it all is to guide us back to the Father, to turn the hearts of his sons and daughters back to the Father. That's what, what the Lord wants. God, so the second person of the Holy Trinity, Jesus, becomes man in a crib in order to show us how to be a son of the Father. He dies on the cross in order to forgive our sins, to reconcile us with the Father. So it, this, this relationship, this father-son, <clears throat> father-daughter relationship is absolutely key in understanding our faith. It's the whole, the deepest meaning behind Christmas. Even our, our Blessed Lady, all of her prayer, all of her intercession, all that she does for us in heaven, it, what, what's it all for? It's to reconcile us with the Father, to bring us to the Father, to bring us to heaven. If she guides us to Jesus, her son, he will guide us to the Father. So everything, is, everything revolves around this relationship with the Father, to turn our hearts back to him. And this is exactly why the enemy attacks fatherhood and our notion of fatherhood and our understanding of fatherhood so much. Uh, and scripture tells us if you strike the shepherd, you scatter the sheep. If the Father is not doing what he should, if the father is not a representation of God the Father in the family, the family will suffer the consequences. So like, again, I'm not saying that, is a, that the family deserves to, the family is, pun is punished, but the absence of a father will make a huge difference. All of the statistics back that up. So this is the, the, the key, the heart of our Christmas message, that 
God wants your heart. God wants your love. The Father wants you, his child, to be with him again, to be united with him, to love him, and to be with him for all eternity. So we pray for the realization of this prophecy from Malachi in our own lives and in our own hearts this Christmas. It's going to be different. It's going to be... uh, it's going to be a different atmosphere this Christmas. I think it's going to feel a little, maybe less like a holiday and more, uh, maybe more stressful for people. But let's not lose sight of this central truth that God wants your heart, nothing less. This Christmas, He wants your heart, He wants your love, and He deserves it. We give Him His heart. And the Lord gives us. We give the Lord our hearts, and the Lord grants us freedom. In the words of our psalmist, stand erect and hold your heads high, because your liberation is near at hand.